Good morning and welcome to Weekend Walkabout, our gardens and years virtually. This is a Garden A to Z organization, a Garden A to Z <laughs> publication, and I'm Janet. I'm Stephen. And, and the topic today is in our garden at the spring equinox, which we think is an important time of year. And I think every gardener around here thinks the same thing. We've got a whole wheelbarrow full of observations and we want your topics out here. A lot of your topics are already in here, but we want more of them. We want to know because we learn so much from what yeah. other people are thinking. Um, we're here and our daughter, daughter Sonia Nicola is here. She is as, as usual and, and so thankfully our moderator. Um, she is an expert gardener. She's also an expert because she's a professor at a university and been teaching by Zoom off and on for uh, four years. If you have questions about the technology involved, if you have questions for us, if you have questions about whatever topic is going on in chat, put them in there. You're likely to find that you've got um, not only Sonia's answer, but other people's answers too. Lots of experience in this audience. And, uh, and we've been writing for, it's almost 40 years now. And I wanna thank Nancy and David, who I'm sorry, I forgot to look at your email for so long. Um, for sending us a better picture of our publications than we've ever taken ourselves. Yes, yeah, much. Yeah, <laughs> we've been writing. Great. We've been writing books, writing in magazines, writing in the newspaper, um, to, uh, speaking. We had a school for for twelve years or thirteen years, and uh, all those things that we wrote, we didn't want to learn, have to learn again. So we yeah. wanted to put them all in one place and started the website gardenazz.org. Um, where you can go and take a look at, like we do, at trying to find things. Today, I'm going to show you a few ways to yeah. find things that are there. Um, if you uh, came in just recently, uh, just momentarily, and the uh, you went off of your invitation, it said there was no note-taking guide, and there isn't, but there is an agenda, and uh, you can go into chat. Whoop, there we go. Paste. Enter. It's in the, if you open your chat window, there's a link there. If you, you find that you want the two lists we're going to show you, the shade trees for clay soil, you can download that. So we're going to start off with how impatient people are right now for please let it be spring. Please <laughs> cry it out loud. Send me some information that it is spring. Um, and the plants are impatient too. I, I have always been absolutely amazed how the plants even inside the house, even away no. from a window, know that the days are getting longer and start doing different things. Um, and so I, I try to burn off the energy by going places where it's okay to grow plants like greenhouses. I love succulents. I think they're just the cutest things in, in the world, um, even though people jam them in so they can't possibly turn to be as cute as they, and they're cute even when they're big. Big. Yeah, yeah some of the huge ones there. we saw in the uh, New that we, Zealand world. And that we used to have. Um, yeah. Although I do not understand, I do not understand cactus. Um, I, I just, having repeatedly gotten myself full of spines when we did have one cactus, I thought, I, I can't yeah, imagine it, people yeah, live with these things it, all the time. Yeah. Um, and we've been found that that it's our major topic, even from people who seem like they don't really like the the, the indoor plants they'll write us or email us in about yeah. this time of year and go, I got to do something. Um, the plant keeps losing its its, uh, its new shoots as they're coming up. What's going on? Well, probably if the new shoot keeps dying, then there's something wrong with the roots. Depot it and take a look to see. And now is a great time. Great, great, great time. to yeah. do that. This is the format that we used to use for our newsletters before we had the website. We would put them out this way every week, 15, 20 pages. I can't, I with don't know pictures. who those people were. I don't yeah. know. Um, if you're going to up pot, don't say, I'm only going to do this once and get it over with. Don't put them into a great big pot if they're in a small pot. It's not good. The more new potting mix you put around the outside of the, of the um, pot that you're up potting, the wetter it stays for longer because it's not full of roots. And for plants, especially the plants like cactus and succulents that don't need extra water, those root tips can rot just from being put in an extra pot. More, um, more indoor plants probably uh, have stress from overwater than underwater. Yeah, the watering is what kills most of the indoor plants, and it's overwatering. Um, I've watched many jades get up potted and imme almost immediately, within days, the leaves start wrinkling um, because they're they're in trouble. Did, did we just talk to somebody who said that? Somebody was watering the indoor plants. So they went and bought plant. Well, that was plants. that was what I did with Grandma Jenny. That's right. <laughs> uh, you were telling that at 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 yeah. yeah. Another thing, another thing that you can do this time of year to burn off some of this energy that we shouldn't spend 
trampling in our gardens that shouldn't be trampling. in our own soil. Is go out to the botanical gardens and see what you love there now. If you can find something you like among the boxwood, all these different kinds of boxwood that turn different color, if you can find something that you like in the rock garden, if you can find something that you like in the way that they've, uh, they've sculpted the lawn and bed area, then you're finding a keeper because if you like it in March, it is definitely something you want to have in your landscape. Um, yeah. It's where we fell in love with some of the barks that we yes. love to be able to grow. Um, yeah. And where I realized that I do love weeping willows, but I wish one of my neighbors would put one in. And I'm very upset with the neighbor who took one down. It was a beautiful one see. straight across. We could have seen, oh, it's bigger than both of those. And not only is the color great very early in the in late winter, very early before it becomes spring, but those branches are great to use for yeah, weaving. They're things. starting to really yellow up now. Yeah. And with that, it is time for the Sonia, Sonia show because... Uh, we live, now live in a house that is way too dark because of trees that overhang on the house to grow plants without lights. And I'm not about to set up the big lights that they have to do. But Sonia, um, thanks to her husband, Cam, who you never usually see, but he's he's there holding the dog when it was a puppy. Um, Sonia has a lot of plants because Cam loves to have these plants and names them. And you want to take it away, Sonia? Sure. Yeah. So we do have a decent amount of light. Uh, we The room that I'm in um, faces south and uh, gets a lot of morning light, but I had to take it over from my office when I started teaching online. So there's only limited plants I can keep in here now. This table used to be a plant table. Um, but our, our front window then faces north and it gets a lot of light. It's a big, big window, but it's cold. Uh, so the discussion about cactuses, for instance, um, no matter how much light you get, if, if you can't keep those plants warm, they're not, not going to do great. So I brought some of, some of our, our, our friends here. This is, uh, this is the first plant that Cam and I got together. Um, can't even see all of him. Uh, this is Ming the Jade. Oh, and he is, he's a pretty big guy. Um, yeah. We got him at a corner store in Toronto. He was only just about sort of that, that big. Um, so he was doing great, but you can kind of tell there's no way that that trunk that big should be producing such a sparse amount of green up top. Um, and so we've been, we've been working with him without up potting because just like Janet said, we know that's, that's bad for jades, but clearly he's not as happy as he could be. Um, so we've been sort of gently adding some sand. Um, we switched him to a terracotta pot um, so that he could breathe a little bit better. Um, but we have managed to make a lot of babies of Ming. So we will always have Ming with us no matter how, how poorly he ends up doing. Um, so there are three of Ming's babies who are uh, about his size when we got him. Um, we also have back here, I'm not even sure I should lift this guy. This is a hibiscus um, that we oh, also had from delicious. Toronto. Uh, we had two that sat outside of either side of our door. And you know that rule about how uh, you're not supposed to plant things in two because they won't thrive together? So we had two pots outside of our door, two hibiscus, and uh, someone just stole one pot, just walked up to our porch and just took the whole pot and the whole hibiscus away. Um, so I think they were just fulfilling the rule that you're not supposed to try for symmetry of two plants. Um, so we have another hibiscus now that we uh, grew from a friend's uh, sprout that was only probably about this big when we got it. And it's a yellow hibiscus that's now a little bit taller than that guy and a little bit thinner. So we do, we, we, we try to start, start small um, and, and grow them up. Uh, I also have a rosemary that is looking incredibly wonky right now because he reaches for the sun. Um, you can see these are all brand new shoots from the winter. I don't know if you can see the powder that's flying off, probably not. He's got powdery stuff on him that I've texted Janet about and she seems to think that it's not of much, much concern. He's also got gnats. You probably can't see them, the little, those little fungus gnat guys. So the question about bringing things in from the, uh, from the outside and does it come with bugs? Sometimes, although honestly, these gnats didn't really show up until about a month ago. So I'm not sure they really were from the outside. All of these plants, all of them live outside on our deck all summer from probably the last week of April and uh, last week of May until um, late October. They, they just live on the deck, all of them. Um, so uh, the reason I'm letting him be squirrely and nutso is because 
I want someday for my rosemary to be as big as my profile picture's rosemary. If anyone can see this profile picture, this was Janet and Steve's rosemary from the house that I grew up in. Um, and that is Janet, I think, carrying it that you can't even see. I want a rosemary that big. So I am letting him grow in however he wants to grow. Uh, let's see, what else do I have for, for show and tell? Oh, Janet, you mentioned cute stuff, going to nurseries and looking at the cute little succulents and things. We are susceptible to that too, especially my husband. So our current project is we got some of those little stone plants, the ones that look like funny little, um, so we're giving, we're giving these guys uh, a shot with a, a, an aloe of some sort in the back, but aren't they, aren't they adorable? Little, look like little brains or something. They look like elephants buried upside yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the first yeah. one of the first things I tried to grow from seed were the stone plants, the living stone plants. And then because we do like jades very much, we have a couple of cool jades. We have um, the I'm not even sure what we what we call this more sort of coral looking uh, jade, but um, he also we got him from a friend at about that size, just that little bit, um, and he has now uh, in ten years. Um, gotten to gotten to tree form, um, and then right here on my desk, we got a little bleached jade that we think is is quite quite cool. He's also a very new addition, um, and he tells me very quickly when these big leaves get wrinkly. It's so easy to see, um, and that's the only time I water my jades is if the leaves are wrinkly and like real wrinkly. I I don't I yeah I I err on the side of keeping the jades uh, as dry as possible. Thank you. So that's, that's my show and tell. Thank you. Well, uh, we can start the share again. And you can tell me, uh, uh, is it just the camera or is Ming's bark quite dark compared to the other jades? Um, a little, a little dark, but not much. He's actually, he's a really um, beach gray color. So it could uh -huh. be the camera showing him dark. But yeah, I would, I would call him almost exactly the color of a nice smooth uh, old beach. Yeah. They are cool plants. I, uh, I, it's it's nice having them around. And the fungus gnats, um, for the most part, mm -hmm. yeah, for the most part, they are uh, they are indoor plant bugs. They um, they they well, like you said, the plant seemed the uh, rosemary seemed like it was okay, and there were no fungus gnats for a while, and they just showed up now. Most of the time, when you bring plants in, they are very healthy. If you've had them outside, they've had enough light. They're healthy enough that they fight off what's going on. They have enough of the chemicals that they make in their own systems to deter and and uh, suppress the insect pop um, populations. But as the the days grow shorter and shorter in the middle of winter, they get weaker and weaker, and the population of the bugs begins to to pick back up again. So if they did bring anything in, you will see it sometime from January on. I've often often written about that. And and I'll say that in terms of when we bring all of this stuff in, um, I I don't I, I know that I could be washing the leaves or doing like a soap soaker. I I don't I don't do anything when I bring them in. I I just I just bring them in. Um, so they either we they are very strong and don't tend to uh, get many bugs, but we we don't have bug issues bringing them. In. Sometimes a couple of roly polies in the tray, right? That's that's uh pretty much the only bugs that, that we've ever seen uh, come here, come in. And I wanted to uh, comment to Jack Gretchen in the chat. It's hard to keep through the winter. Yes, I have killed a dozen, no, half a dozen rosemaries at this point. Rosemaries and bays. I am a murderer of rosemaries and bays. Um, and this one, this is the longest one has made it through the winter in a while. So I'm hopeful. Well, I, I find so many people say rosemary is hard to bring through. And when I saw it growing, in the winter in the house at Burdett's house. You were um, our good friend, Burdett Chapman, who was an yeah. incredible grower. Yep. It needs to be cold. And if it's not cold, it's regardless where it is, it has to be in great light. And then you water it like regular. It's in a lot of books, it says, oh, keep rosemary dry. If you've got it in the house where it's warm, you have to have it in really good light. And then you have to keep watering it like regular. If you have a cold house, and Sonia's house is cold um, compared to our house, we keep our house hot enough that I think they weren't bring their summer clothes when they come to visit here. <laughs> um, 
and the cold certainly helps. So try putting it in a place where it's colder or get it its own light. Ours ours had its own light. Uh, the one that you saw me carrying in the door had its own light. It sat it's, in one place, yeah. even though the house was south facing and had lots of light coming in, it, it, got, it had a grow light. It got the light it from the big window and it had the grow light too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Praying, speaking, praying, speaking, praying. Of keeping, yes. speaking of keeping warm, um, uh, Stacey is wondering about putting the plants on a heat mat that we want to, in the in the north window room. Uh, purely practically, the um, sideboard where all the plants sit in the window is also where the dogs like to run as we throw balls for them. So the idea of having any cords coming off of that would be a, um, a disaster. But um, I'm not sure. I'd be worried about a heat mat that was too hot and would actually end up frying the bottom. I don't know, Janet, what do you think about a heat mat? If you're in a really, if you're in a really, really cold house, we had metal window frames in our old house and we would get ice on the window frame sometimes. You, that would be cold enough to seriously impact a plant, but having it cold where it's 50 degrees, that's not going to bother them. Uh, yeah. Not at all. In fact, in some cases, it'll help like with the rosemary to make it go a little bit more dormant and not uh, try be trying to grow in such low light. 